All right, six minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. We've had conversations with uh, some of the winners from the L. Ron Hubbard Writers and Illustration, Illustrators of the Future Awards um, in the past. And uh, their stories are always amazing. Their artwork and their stories are always amazing. Um, Anthony Moravian is on the phone. He's one of the illustrators who has uh, made a name for himself with uh, that contest, and I'm sure before the contest as well. Uh, It says here he is an illustrator specializing in charcoal drawings and oil paintings and an illustrator quarterly finalist in the L. Ron Hubbard Writers and Illustrators of the Future Award for Volume 33 which will be released on April 2nd, right? Yep. Um, so I don't know. Uh, this always seems like this is a feather in the cap of those who uh, are able to accomplish this accomplishment, if that makes sense. Uh, Anthony Moravian, good morning, sir. How are you? Uh, good morning, Larry. Nice to meet you. I was just looking at some of your artwork. Robin told me what your website was. You are amazing. This is unbelievable stuff. Uh, oh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Where are you? Where are we calling? Oh, uh, we're calling from actually Brooklyn, uh, New York, uh, right in Bed Stuy. So, oh, okay, okay. Um, let's see. Um, th- is this charcoal? Wow, look at this guy. This self- Isn't it fabulous? Is that you? Oh, self portrait. Oh, that's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's actually uh, that one of my first. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, that's actually one of my first uh, acrylic painting. Uh, that one was actually done in acrylics. Oh, that's acrylic. Wow. I, I, yeah. Is it a black and white picture, or it, did you do it in black and white? Uh, yeah, I did. It in, I actually did the uh, painting in black and white. Uh, it was originally uh, just based off of a uh, photograph that a, a great professor I had uh, took of me. Wow, you could be a movie star. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll say. So how do you, I mean, where do the ideas come from to, to, to uh, like, the illustrations that I'm looking at on your website? What's oh, what's with this yeah. rabbit? Oh, this rabbit is scary. <laughs> do, do, when, I was a yeah. kid, when I was a kid, I was always afraid of the Br'er Rabbit. I just thought the Br'er Rabbit was a scary rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. So where, yeah, did, um, where did the ideas come from? Uh, a lot of those ideas actually came from my inspiration and uh, old horror movies and I guess for the rabbit in particular, that one was uh, an Alice in Wonderland uh, inspiration. So I just wanted to kind of create like a confusing, almost abstract atmosphere uh-huh. uh, where the trees are just kind of uh, just kind of twisting into each other. But uh, a majority of my inspiration also came from uh, how I, how I grew up. So I, I grew up um, reading lots of comic books and. Uh, when I would read those comic books, I would always try to try to draw them when I was young. And when I did that, uh, it just kind of uh, sparked an interest in creating, uh, I guess, kind of dynamic uh, characters that kind of uh, mesh well with like uh, realistic proportions and stuff like that. Yeah. And being in New York, you have uh, a lot of really good exhibits around here, like the Metropolitan Museum uh, of Art, right. and it's filled with like uh, dozens and uh, hundreds of realistic paintings, and uh, seeing that it's it's always it's always in awe. And so I always wanted to capture a more realistic take, but uh, never lose sight of the science fiction and fantasy approach to creating a painting. One of the um reasons I like doing these interviews uh, with the folks who have uh, achieved some success with this particular competition is because I want our listenership, I want this part of the country to, especially the young artists and the young writers, although not only, because I I know we've got some guys out there that are 60-something that are trying their hand at some of the writing part, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, And and, and I like the idea that you can perhaps catapult your career to to another level um, with a contest that doesn't cost you anything to enter. that I always think that the contest, I don't know, I'm sure there are good ones, but it seems like if you have to pay, then somebody's making money on you uh, yeah. getting disappointed, if you know what I mean. Yeah, there, there's definitely that aspect I notice a lot in art, and that's why I, I really love this contest. You could enter as much as you want. Uh, it's, it's free, and uh, you have some of the... Uh, top illust- uh, top illustrators in the industry that actually judge your work. So uh, it, it's really good to get that type of acknowledgement from uh, fellow peers in the industry. I, I'm going to tell you something I like about what I'm looking at here. I, I like that it looks like it's you and your hand 
and and there's not a computer between the two. Not that I have a problem with computer art. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I just think this looks like it's all done. Like if I put you in a room with nothing but a charcoal and a piece of paper, yeah. I, and I came back four hours later, you'd have something amazing. That's what I think. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, definitely a good skill to uh, have, and I, it's always interesting for me to create a piece uh, traditionally. Uh, just because of the uh, having actually being able to have the tools nearby, and then at the uh, when you're finished with the work, you have an end result. And I've always been interested in that sort of thing. And I also do love uh, digital as well. Uh, but I think there's something about traditional that I do uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's really quite enjoy. I love your uh, interpretation of fashion that you have. Uh, one of the interesting things about your bio was that you graduated magna cum laude from the uh, uh, fashion institute of technology so you 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 had to not only uh you know love the human form and and all the curves and everything of it but you also had to be able to do the fashion as well yeah yeah there's uh definitely a lot uh they have extensive uh fashion illustration courses uh i've taken a few uh it's it's a really good program that they have. Um, and in fact, actually, uh, one of the professors there, uh, he was a great professor I had, and he actually uh, introduced me to the method of painting in Grizz Eye. And after doing that uh, one time, uh, I figured I had to do that more. And uh, I guess basically a Grizz Eye is just uh, what you would call like an underpainting to um, an overlayer in uh uh, traditional painting in oils or acrylics and it's the layer that's done in, in black and white and uh, a lot of old uh, old masters would call that the uh, dead layer so underneath their painting at the Met it's interesting to see uh, think about how a lot of those paintings were done and often they would have a dead layer which would be a oh, black really? and white paint oh yeah. so they did two actually two complete paintings then yeah, many of them work that oh way. My. I, I know a lot of uh, Dutch and Flemish painters actually work that way. I, th- I think in your blog, I'm looking at your website, in your blog you're sort of demonstrating that with the uh, uh, creation of Forsaken painting you did. Yes. Uh, that one actually I was trying out uh, a new method. Uh, I wanted to just create a really loose underpainting and not, tr- not try to get too specific uh, and just to capture... Uh, keep a lot of energy, uh, which can often get lost, I guess, when you're working from a sketch, which is more or less the abstract component of the painting, and then building that up into uh, final painting. When you're focused on refining the detail, sometimes the energy can get lost. So for that one, I wanted to keep everything uh, relatively loose. For when you do your sketches, uh, do you have uh, uh, human models for that, or does it come out of your head? Uh, for the most part, I use models. Uh, to uh, it's more, I think it's a little bit easier to come up with a more realistic uh, result if you do have something that you can refer back to. Uh, there are many illustrators who are very fantastic at uh, just coming up with. Uh, really good results without really? uh, anything, did which this, I do. Did this little naked guy actually pose for you? Look at him. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> did, he, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't look happy. He looks like he's not happy with you drawing him. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> A- Anthony, am I saying your last name correctly, Anthony Moravian? Yeah, Moravian, perfect. Moravian uh, yeah. is in Brooklyn, Robin, in the Bed- Bed-Stuy area. You know where that is. Yeah, my father told me stay away from that area. That's my father Uh told me. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, it's it's come a long way actually. Uh, I I remember when I was growing up. uh, I actually I grew up in Park Slope uh, around uh, Third Avenue. So okay, uh, for most of my life I was a Park Slope kid, and uh, over it's like uh, a lot of these areas in Brooklyn kind of. Like they, they're getting a lot better. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Bed Stuy is definitely one of those neighborhoods that's come a long way. Yeah, uh, I remember hearing like the warnings about Bed Stuy. Right, and it, <laughs> it's so much different now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you do um, 
impromptu sketches would will you just like go to a, uh, a shopping area or a park or something and just sit there with your sketchbook and sketch people yeah. without them really knowing it yeah uh all the time uh i do that also on uh buses and trains i i think uh just as much life drawing as possible uh, is a good way to improve and uh, keep your work from getting uh, stiff uh, just because it's easier to capture movement and uh, accuracy or at least accuracy to uh, developing uh, specific uh, muscles in your brain because I, I think drawing is mostly related to how you think and uh, less so about uh, I mean well the, there's obviously muscle memory some kind of muscle memory that goes into it but I think it's mostly about uh, how you think and I think when you're drawing from life uh, or impromptu sketches uh, it, it trains that muscle so it's, it's mm. definitely useful uh, Anthony Moravian is our guest, and uh, he is um, on, on his way to making a name for himself in, in the world of publishing and, and uh, in art, of course. Uh, he is one of the, the winners of the uh, illustrated. I always say this wrong. Um, are you, let's see, let me just read this so I don't get it wrong. You're an illustrated artist specializing in charcoal and drawing. I'm trying to get the, the part about the L. Ron, it's such a long word, uh, uh, the name. The L. Ron Hubbard Writers and Illustrators of the Future Award for Volume 33. Okay, so y one, of the art, one of the stories has your illustration in it, right? Yes. Okay. Is one of those pictures, is the picture on your website? Uh, no, actually, I haven't uploaded it yet, uh, but I did, I did finish it. Uh, it's a painting for a story called A Glowing Heart. And basically the story uh it, w it was kind of it was it was in a si uh, science fiction -y type of universe but uh the setting was very down to earth and realistic and in the sense that it was about a struggling uh family and uh their need to uh, m make a profit off of uh yeah uh, by any means necessary in this particular case it was hunting uh rare animal and uh using uh selling the pelt uh for hmm. uh something that would carry them over a harsh winter how did, oh my. how did you discover the um the uh, the writers and illustrators contest uh actually i discovered that when i was in school and uh i was actually looking for scholarship money and uh when i was looking for scholarship money uh, i happened to find uh, the contest online and I figured I might as well uh, try submitting and the first time I submit uh, I, 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 did, I didn't even come close but uh <laughs> why what did you do wrong uh, actually it was just um, I got my work was uh, it was it probably wasn't it just wasn't up to par at that point in time okay but uh, uh, you know you the good thing about the contest is that you can keep submitting over and over and over again. And uh, when you're doing that, you know, you also have to look at your competition in, in that contest. Yeah, and right, right. see what they're doing. Did you get and, feedback from the judges to give you some direction? Uh, actually, I did get uh, a lot of messages about uh, how I could, uh, you know, improve my chances and how I could, uh, you know, what would, what would, um, help out uh, i got a lot of private messages from some of the uh, contest directors and uh, that was really helpful and you know one of the things they they pushed was uh submitting uh frequently and to not stop and to just keep uh, submitting new work yeah and when you're creating all this new work your your art or writing uh whichever you're doing it's, right. it's getting better along the way and you become more aware of uh, what other contestants are doing. And because on the website, you can see all of the winners and you get to see, uh, you know, uh, what it is they're doing or any trends they're capturing. And uh, uh, you could uh, objectively uh, pair where, where they're doing, and they're more successful in their illustrations than yours. And I think uh, that actually can help push you to the next level because. Uh -huh get that kind of direct feedback and you get to compare side by side and see like okay what needs to be refined is this anatomy correct uh and how the winner might have nailed everything and just having that 
side by side is wow. I, I think one of the most uh, beneficial things of uh, submitting to this contest or submitting to contests in general. Well, they they must have really seen something special in you for them to private message you with ways to improve because you really have a lot of action going on in your illustrations, even not not just the character in the foreground but in the background as well. So they must have really seen something special. Yeah, uh, I I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, mean, I think the, I think the human form, the faces. I mean, you're so good at the faces, and you know sometimes you look at artwork and you will say, okay, this person is good at like non-animate things, like buildings and and tr- and well, trees, sort of. Yeah. Who's the guy? Thomas Kincaid, like he mm-hmm. ne- like he never did people, and you, or at least I didn't, yeah. see, right? And you yeah. say, okay, these are beautiful pictures, yeah. but where are all the people? You know, and so, so I, yeah. th- I think maybe not to take away from him because I know people some sometimes like to dismiss him, but I, <laughs> but I think his work is beautiful. But so is yours, and I think maybe we as humans like to see humans. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. That's what I uh, think of all the time. Uh, yeah, you, you could paint like the most beautiful landscape, but if you're including like a close up of a person around that uh, landscape, uh, we're always going to linger on that human element yeah. in the painting. It could even come in the form of an animal, an animal amongst the landscape, or anything like that. Anything that's close to just being uh, more human, uh, I find that we linger on, especially faces and hands. And I really like the picture of the uh, um, blonde-haired lady where she's got the pistol in her right hand and it's over her right shoulder and she's looking back. She's I mean, blood coming out of her mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you but but you've got the folds on the clothing. You've got the you know like like the glove on the hand and the way the the uh, uh, other glove is on her left hand on her hip. I mean, I. You know, there it's nothing is flat on that. Everything is very reflective and very you know foldy. It looks like it's jumping right off the page. Yeah, that that one was actually uh, probably one of my uh, uh, favorite ones, I guess. For uh, its inspir, it falls back to my inspiration of old horror movies and uh, steampunk for this one. So uh, a lot of that steampunk just kind of takes it. Uh, it inspires most of the design, and I, I just wanted to such uh, subtly hint that it's a, hmm. a vampire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I guess that was yeah. very well done. Anthony Moravian is our guest. Anthony, we have to take a little break, but uh, when we come back, we'll. Uh, I want to find out about uh, what your plans are and if you're going out to Hollywood for the award ceremony. So let's take that break, and we'll find out the answers to those questions on the other side. Leprechaun Soft Wash is the roof washing method that is safe and effective on shingles, tile, metal and shake roofs, vinyl, wood, aluminum, hardy board and stucco siding, driveways, pavers, and the list goes on. Leprechaun Soft Wash is fully insured and uses biodegradable cleaning products. Plus, Leprechaun Soft Wash offers a spot-free warranty on roof cleanings. Call 751-2325. No more blimey roof stains. With Leprechaun Soft Wash, 751-2325. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Physical activity contributes to a child's happiness and does, in fact, promote learning. Every year, dentists save thousands of lives in North America by spotting growths and abnormalities in our mouth that end up being cancer many times. Also at the hotel, use the clips on the pants hangers in your closet to clip your curtains together so no light comes through. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. All right, 25 minutes after 10 o'clock. Gosh, time flies when you're having a great conversation. 71 degrees, by the way. Uh, what is the temperature up in uh, Brooklyn, Anthony? Uh, actually, I think it's about uh, 58 or so today. Uh, it's actually, it's quite warm, I guess, for out. Been a mild, been a mild winter, even there, huh? 
Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, are you um, part of a family of illustrators and artists, or are you like the lone wolf? Uh, actually, the only other artist in my family is my grandfather. Um, he makes bags, and um, uh, he actually demonstrated, I guess, like he, he used to draw comic book style uh, figures. So when I was a kid, that was definitely my uh, inspiration is uh, when he did a demo of drawing a comic book figure for me. Oh, wow. And yeah. Then after seeing that, I wanted to do that. <laughs> so I'm assuming he's still alive, and based on how you're talking about it. Uh, yeah, he's still alive. So <laughs> how is it, how excited is he that you have won this contest? Oh uh, yeah, he's uh, very excited. Actually, he's uh, been following a lot of my artwork, and he's always interested in seeing uh, what I come up with new. And so this is definitely exciting for him and for all my family. When, when you were younger and you would draw something like this naked guy, were you afraid to show other people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that definitely, I definitely was uh, a little bit odd, <laughs> I guess, at first, because yeah, uh, I, I, I grew up uh, going to a Catholic school, so it was, <laughs> it yeah, was yeah. definitely very interesting. Well, it, it, is, it is kind of weird. I mean, you go to a museum, and it seems like the most celebrated pieces are usually nudes. And yet, as an artist, you often I often wonder, how do you um, you, how do you show this to your mom? Look what I did, Mom. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I guess I guess it's a, a little a little less difficult uh, if it's. Um, I, I mean, at first it was interesting. Uh, usually, I don't show any of my. <laughs> my uh, life drawings around very often but uh, I actually got a job at the Society of Illustrators when I started and I was working sketch nights and so there uh, you know you they had they have new models for Tuesdays and so you I would just wind up getting used to it because uh -huh. you'd be drawing hundreds and hundreds and I worked there for uh, two uh, two years so after a while, you just kind of become numb to it, and wow. you know the first time you show your parents, like, okay, well, that's interesting. <laughs> you <took an> in <laughs> you <took> an, uh, <laughs> are you, are you going? Are you going to the award ceremony? Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, I'll definitely be going. The award ceremony. Uh, uh, we're leaving at around uh, March twenty eighth, and the actual event is starting. Uh, April 2nd, and it's open uh, for attendance at wow. the uh, Wilshire uh, Theater. So that should be very interesting. Uh, I'm That's definitely cool. excited, and I'm probably a little nervous for it, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so You're cool. marvelous. You are absolutely a fabulous artist. Absolutely. Really, really a joy to talk to as well. Uh, Anthony, thank you for taking time out of your morning to be with us today. For the other, for writers and illustrators in our community, uh, you got to check it out. Check out the L. Ron Hubbard Writers and Illustrators of the Future Award contest. You will, uh, you will, you will get that support that you probably will need in order to to be a winner, even if you don't win the first time around. Uh, do like Anthony did. Pay attention to the feedback that that helps to guide you. Um, the website for that is writersofthefuture.com, by the way, and Anthony's website is moravianart.com. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for being with us today. Good luck with everything you're doing. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Vice President Mike Pence continues his efforts to reassure European leaders of U.S. support, meeting with European Council President Donald Tusk and others in Brussels. The United States' commitment to the European Union is steadfast and enduring. President Tusk, President Trump and I look forward to working together with you and the European Union to deepen our political and economic partnership. Some European leaders have expressed concern over U.S. policies under President Trump. The president heads back to Washington today after a working weekend in Florida Bye. talking to contenders for national security advisor. I